Hey, what's up guys? Nick the Informative Fisherman here, and today we're gonna be doing a segment called Fishing Tips. This is a generalized fishing tips that can help you with all of your fishing, not just any particular type, not surf, not bank. This is gonna cover everything that you do from bass fishing, stream fishing, you name it. I'm not gonna explain any simple shenanigans to you. These are all quality tips to help you put more fish in the boat and to stay more efficient at what you're doing and maintain that focus. So let's get into it. Okay, so here's one I thought most anglers already know. When you clip your, uh, you know, your hook back into your line catch right here and you go to lay your rod on the deck of the boat, a simple trick for not getting them tangled is grab the line coming just up from your bait, rotate it around that top eye, right? Th well, the first eye right there until it starts to get tight on your fingers and let go. That'll suck that line to that rod blade, keep it real nice and tight. You could stack them up on one another and they hardly ever snag unless you get the lure side by side. But if you stagger your rods a little bit, you're really not gonna get hung up like that. So a lot of the times you'll be out on the lake and you'll have crystal clean water, you have dirty water back in the coves, and then you'll have some of that green water in between. That green water is algae. It's algae blooms. Now microorganisms called zooplankton eat algae, okay? That phytoplankton is that algae. That's that greenery in the water. So a lot of the times if you can find that green water, you're gonna find bait fish in that area feeding on those, and then you're gonna find those bigger fish feeding on the bait fish. So look for that slightly stainish green water, something you know with still five, six good foot of visibility, and a lot of the times you're gonna find more fish in that water. Another good tip for you, a lot of the time I see guys out fishing and they tend to be on the reel going a little bit too quick. Do you know way more often than going fast, by going slow you're going to trigger more bites? So instead of getting on the reel, try to move pick up line like this by moving your rod and simply reel in the slack. And a lot of the time on those tougher days you're going to acquire a lot more bites and encourage a lot more fish to strike with that slower movement. So oftentimes, slower is gonna outperform faster. Honestly, I would say 75, 80% of the time, slower over faster. But when you're searching for them, sometimes you gotta work a little bit faster with the crankbait, but if you're working a worm or working a plastic, slower is better than faster. Now oftentimes when you're out fishing, I see a lot of people bring four of the very similar baits, okay? And they don't bring things that are drastically different. In bass fishing, if you go out and you watch these professionals pre-fish, they have something drastically different, a crankbait, a spinnerbait, a worm, a jig. Drastic changes oftentimes, trying out drastic different plugs in a certain area, things that are not very similar, not changing the color of your crankbait so much, but going from a crankbait to a jig to a spinnerbait in that same area is gonna give you clues. Then if you get bit on that spinnerbait, refine that spinnerbait. You can change up the skirt, look for better blades, something that's gonna perform better to that clue you were given. But don't start off with five very similar baits. Start off with completely different baits, make drastic changes before subtle changes. The same thing, when you're fishing a part of the lake and you're getting small fish here, instead of moving a quarter mile down the bank, pick up, run three miles down, look for a whole new section of water and try there. Drastic changes outperform subtle changes way more often than not. So make a drastic move instead of a subtle move. So if you get out to a new body of water and you didn't do your map research or anything like that, you get out there, you show up with a friend, it was spontaneous, immediately the first thing you want to do, no matter what type of fishing you're doing, if you want to find fish, look for main lake points. Look for a long, slow, taper, slow tapering bank out into the main lake. Those big points hold fish year round, you know, spring, summer, fall, winter. Points hold fish in all kinds of fish, so if you're just looking to get bit with no matter what you're doing and you have no intel on that lake, search the points, fish the point, shallow, mid, and deep. Break a point down instead of searching too much bank because you're gonna find out you're gonna put a heck of a lot more fish in the boat by fishing points. Now did you guys know smaller hooks and lighter line, and when I say lighter, I'm talking four pound versus eight pound. Lighter line, smaller hooks, your baits perform better the fish feel less displacement and you get a heck of a lot more bites. A big problem that a lot of guys do is go too big thinking, well, I don't want to lose the fish. Well, the problem is instead of losing the fish, you're not getting nearly as many bites. You don't want to go down to like two pound test if you're bass fishing, but instead of fishing, you know, 15 or 20 in a lake that doesn't have a lot of debris or hangups, try 12, try 10 if you can get away with it and you're going to realize your bite ratio is a little bit more often. So another thing that can make you much more efficient in the boat, if you have a big giant tackle box with all your tackle in there and you have an idea of what you want to fish the next day, 
take out everything you think you want to try or you figured out a pattern and you say, well, I think I'm going to try this, 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 and that. Take it all out, take one box, slap those baits in there, and put it in a spot that's easy to get to so you're not digging through all your tackle. Believe it or not, you'll probably lose 30 to 40 to 50 casts in a day's time, and we all know that it only takes a couple of big bites to make a phenomenal fishing day. So everything you're gonna use, take one box and put it in that box. So something I have to tell myself often and I try to remind other guys or even new fishermen coming into it, I say plan to spend 20 to 25% of your day retying knots, putting on new baits, fixing problems that may occur, engine things, uh, the wind's blowing too hard, you have to find new water. Sp plan to spend that 25% of your day not fishing. Okay, and if you focus and you say, well, I guarantee 25% of my day is gonna be gone from things that may occur, you're less likely to get frustrated. When you get frustrated on the water, your fishing day is going downhill. Ask any pro and they will tell you the same thing. If you get mad, those fish are done biting what you're showing them. I can guarantee you that. So plan on that 25% of retying, finding new water, expect things not to go always perfectly as planned and you'll realize you're gonna be much more focused and much more efficient. Hang with us guys, we'll be right back. Attention Northern California anglers, have you been to boat country in Escalon? With one of the largest selections of welded aluminum fishing boats from Weldcraft, Low and Hughescraft, chances are they've got the right fishing boat for you. And did I mention they have a full service center to take care of all your boating, repair, and maintenance needs? If you're a boat owner or just looking to become one, you owe it to yourself to check these guys out. Visit BoatCountryUSA.com or stop on by. I'll see you there. Did you know that P-Line makes specialized lines for all your fishing needs from the super strong abrasive resistant CXX or the low stretch super stealthy CX Premium or maybe you're looking for invisibility or super bite detection with P-Line's 100% fluorocarbon. No matter what your needs, P-Line's got it covered. To find out more, visit P-Line.com. P-Line, baby! Ever try pulling a planer board next to your boat when trolling or fishing from a swift current bank? If not, you're missing out on one of the most phenomenal fish catching machines on the market today. With Yellowbird planer boards pulling your lines perpendicular to your boat, you can't help but catch more fish. Find out more by visiting www.yellowbirdproducts.com. Have you been to RustyLures.com? Did you know they offer free shipping on anything over $29.99? And with all the latest and greatest in bass fishing gear from punching tackle, umbrella rigs, swim baits, and you name it, there's really no reason for you not to be getting the best deal online today. So go to www.RustyLures.com. Did you ever wish for an RC boat when you were a kid? And do you have a passion for fishing? Well, guess what? It's time to do them both at the same time. With RCFishingWorld.com's RC Fishing Pole, it's time to be a kid again. So visit www.rcfishingworld.com today. Thanks for watching. Now let's get back to the show. So here's some quick knot suggestions on the line types. If you're using standard monofilament or copolymer lines, use a Palomar knot. The thing cinches in on itself. It's pretty much the best knot out there. Uh, there's always room for argument. Some people are going to say, oh, there's something better than the Palomar for that. But Palomar is pretty much 100% knot for monofilaments or for copolymer lines. Now, when it comes to your fluorocarbon, use the improved clinch knot or the fluorocarbon knot. Fluorocarbon is extremely dense and it cuts in on itself. So a lot of the times if you use the Palomar, you can go wrong and actually weaken your knot strength. When it comes to braid, braid's extremely strong, has no stretch, but what it is is slick. So a lot of the time people will tie a single Palomar on braid and they'll think, well, it's fine and they'll cut their tag in too short. They set the hook, the braid pulls through. Um, what you can do to prevent that braid from slipping is tie the double Palomar. I'll slap the illustration for that up right here. It's just twice around and back through, and you're gonna realize you're gonna get much less knot slippage that way. Double Palomar for braid, Palomar knot for mono and copolymer, improved clinch knot or fluorocarbon knot for fluorocarbon. If you have the option to choose when you're gonna go fishing, if you choose prefrontal days, a day or two in front of a storm coming, if you look at your weather forecast, oftentimes that's gonna trigger those fish into eating. The barometer's gonna drop down, a low barometric pressure that's gonna trigger those fish. All the way into the very first day of that storm is really good. If you don't mind getting rained on, go to the first day of the storm, it's usually really good too. Uh, towards the tail end of the storm, it gets really uh, challenging to get bit. A lot of the time the fish settle in, they just gorge themselves, they find sheltered water and protect themselves and don't really eat up. Um, on the post front end of that, the end of the storm, I say wait three to four days after the front if you have the option um, and you're wanting to get bit. These are all predator species, species that hunt other fish. If you're bait fishing, that doesn't apply, uh, go anytime. 
and you'll be pretty good. But if you have the option and you're going for trout, bass, striper, pre-funnel or the first day of a front or a steady weather pattern, and then you're gonna be finding that you're gonna be catching a lot more fish like that versus going post frontal or at the tail end of a front and you realize like, ah, oh, man, I wish we would've caught more if you had the option to plant it. Now to build a little bit on top of that, when I mentioned steady weather forecast, okay, like you see the weather looks pretty much the same for the next two weeks straight. What you can do off that if you wanna plan a better day is fish the morning of the new moons. The new moon's that black moon, so the lights have been off all night, First sun, sun comes up first thing in the morning, boom, someone turns the light on, fish eat. Um, the opposite stands true for the full moon. Fish the evenings of the full moon. They're eating all night and accustomed to eating later in the evening. Uh, you can also look at the moon rise at those times. If you want to go out and the moon rises at 5 o'clock, start around 5 o'clock. If the moon rises in the middle of the night and you want a night fish, well then there you go. But a lot of the time that moon rise is a few hours before that sunset on those full moons and that's a good time to get out there for that evening bite. Uh, on the new moon, you pretty much don't have to worry about it because there's little moon illumination at all. Um, so first thing in the morning on the new moon. Now I see a lot of people neglect plant life, living life, waterfowl. If you see greenery in the water, that's a high oxygenated area that probably has minnows, that has more uh, natural vegetation in there, plant, good plant life, high, uh, higher oxygen. So you're going to have more bait fish in there and you're going to have more predator species fish in there. Just more fish in general versus that dead looking stuff. If you see birds diving into the water, they're more than likely diving after minnows, especially white birds. If you see white birds of any sort diving or pelicans or big egret cranes on the side of the bank standing there looking down bobbing their head at minnows. That's the same thing those fish are feeding on. So don't ignore obvious signs for life. When you see life near the water, that more than likely means there's good life under the water. So pay attention to that. So here's something that kind of drives me a little bit crazy and is a perfect tip for you. When you're fighting a fish and it's pulling drag, don't reel against your drag. You're just burning up your gears in there. You're overworking your reel too much. And basically it's not doing you any good when the fish is pulling line just keep that load in the rod if you're back here then reel down but maintain that load in the rod don't reel when the fish is pulling off drag if he's going and you're reeling you're not doing any good and another thing a lot of people lose fish when they jump okay i you'll see a fish jump they throw the plug out of the water out of their mouth it goes flying they're hitting the surface and i see this all the time people still with the rod up like that when a fish is going to jump Put your rod tip right against the water or even under the water if you have that option. What that'll do is it'll keep that load, that stretch in the line and the pressure on that fish versus when he breaks the water, immediately the stretch comes out, it slaps back and forth. All the weight is now uh, not supported by the cushion of the water. So the odds of them throwing your plug becomes 10 times higher when they break the surface. So if you see that they're gonna break the surface, get that tip down. Now for those trolling guys, you know, you got your rod in the rod holder, you're going down, bam, you see the fish grab it, he takes it. If you start hearing drag peeling off, you can go ahead and pick up the rod out of the rod holder and start to fight the fish. But if you see that fish smack it, and it doesn't look like the rod's really loaded, before ever taking the rod out of the rod holder, start to reel to load that rod. That's gonna prevent you from losing that fish. A lot of the time the guys will pick it right up and they'll drop slack to the fish and when you're trolling, a lot of the time you have treble hooks, so that rear hook could reposition. Now you fasten here and you pull out the hook that originally got them. The downside to that um, is immediately, if you pick up, you drop slack, it could change position, the hooks can shift, you can lose the fish. If you begin to reel from when he initially hooks himself, the only thing you're doing is taking that hook that originally got him and planting it deeper. So you're gonna lose a heck of a lot less fish by reeling before you ever take it out of the rod holder. You know, this may seem obvious, but I have to remind people constantly is pay attention to the details. They'll start fishing out there and they'll hook the fish and I say, well, how far off the bank was it? I don't know. Were you, were you swimming it or were you on the bottom? I don't know. These are critical details. If you catch a fish off the bottom two times in a row and you don't pay attention, well, clearly the majority of the fish are feeding off the bottom and you should have focused on primarily using a bottom bait or working your bait slower to maintain bottom contact. Um, if you caught the fish swimming it, that means they're more aggressive and you probably could have covered more water and caught more fish. So pay attention to every detail, the color, the bite, the speed of your retrieve. Um, if it was in the shade, if, if it was over sun, was it near rock? 
uh, where was the wind position and you could duplicate these wind fishing and catch a heck of a lot more fish by patterning off those clues you can get now I see this a lot of the time. Guys are new to stream fishing, okay? Let's say the water's flowing downstream and I cast a rooster tail or a panther martin and it's going down and the fish bites it right there. The water's going that way. I see guys set the hook, the water's going down and they set the hook upstream. You have resistance of the current and the fish is also facing up current when they take it because they're looking to feed. They don't feed with the water going this way behind them. They feed looking into it. So what you want to do is when you're fishing and your bait's going down current, you always want to set your hook downstream. You have no current resistance and you're also planting the hook this way into the fish and not forward where you have a good odd of losing that fish. Well, I think that's probably again, you know, a good beginner outline for some good fishing tips for you. We'll call this one part one. Uh, progressively throughout the years I will do part two and three and hopefully you guys picked up a lot of good clues and a lot of good tips from this to put more fish in the boat send me your fishing pictures I want to see some results hit me up on Facebook at informative fishermen write me at informative fishermen at gmail and I will make sure to answer all of your guys's fishing questions I appreciate you guys watching go to the webpage informativefisherman.com and get a hold of me guys thanks Hi. Woo -hoo -hoo. Let's hope she's a dead fish. Oh, that is damn. That's called choking it right. California Delta. Doing it does.